Hello, Dominant and Submissive. I'm Master Zahn from Ontario, and today is lecture number 14, Being a True Dom, Beyond the Basics. Now, a true dom is different than a daddy or a master or an owner. Any one of them can be a true dom. But when I say true, I mean the difference between an abusive dom, a fake, a good dominant, and a true dominant. Now, a fake dominant is an abuser. They enter the BDSM lifestyle thinking that abuse is what it's about. They don't bother to learn what the give and take of the dominant submissive relationship or the BDSM culture is actually about. They think they know, they think that it's what they want and will let them get away with what they want to do when it actually is not. They couldn't be farther from the actual meaning of BDSM or the true lifestyle or culture. Fake doms may ignore things like aftercare or punish a submissive for little or no reason. They might yell or strike or put down their submissive with what could be viewed as well beyond acceptable humiliation play or what the submissive would consent to. They may ignore set hard and soft limits if they've even bothered to talk about them with their submissive at the start of the dynamic. There are lots of things that could make a dom a fake. Most are forms or ways of being abusive. But lack of communication, expecting their submissive to learn to serve them without trying to better themselves to learn and grow and help serve their submissive. A dominant who is abusive to their sub is automatically a fake, no matter what else they do in the lifestyle. They tend to not think of their sub's needs, or at least put their own needs first before their submissive, just about every single time. A dom, a good dominant, being a good dom is like being a good partner, basically. You, a good dom does not need training or to know everything about being a dom or BDSM, or be the perfect dom. They make mistakes, they might overpunish from time to time, but they apologize. They, their submissive knows that that's not what they intended to do, and it's not what they intended to do to begin with either. They learn and grow with their submissive. A good dom knows a BDSM or alternative lifestyle is a give and take. It's not all one-sided. And it doesn't have to be with a girlfriend. You can just have a submissive or a dominant. It doesn't have to be an actual romantic relationship. You can be a good dominant with just the basics, knowing aftercare, not forms of restraint, ways to make your submissive feel respected and appreciated and to learn and grow with them. Being a good dom is an important step to becoming a true dominant in the lifestyle. It's a stepping stone along the way. You don't have to start at fake, that's where you absolutely never want to touch, but you do have to start at being at least a good dominant to eventually grow into being a true dominant. Now, a true dominant, these are the people who actually have a claim to the title of master. They've learnt, they've had training, they grow with their submissive. Now, these aren't all exact requirements to be a true dom or a master, but they are important in knowing what's coming and what you're supposed to do at different intervals in the dynamic and relationship, how to help motivate and encourage the submissive. A true dom will also study different types of topics or play to try to understand it before they would ever think about trying it on their submissive. If they haven't tried wax play before, they try the wax on themselves to know that they're not about to burn or harm their submissive. A true dom puts the safety of their submissive first all the time before fun or their own needs or desires. To the point 
like I said, of trying things first. But not just wax, electric clay, knife clay, pretty much anything that the dominant wants to try, they know they need to know how it feels to know how far to push their submissive. A true dominant also knows that in the dynamics, a submissive holds all the true power. They submit to a dominant. They consent to what the dominant wants to do. Without the submissive's consent, the dominant is just an abuser. Not knowing that the submissive has the actual power in the relationship can drastically hurt being a true dom. It won't make you a fake dom, but if it's ignored, it will. And again, a true dominant or someone with a proper claim on master doesn't have to know everything about BDSM. They don't have to know all the knots that can be used. They don't have to know how to do suspension or anything in particular. But they do have to have that drive to learn and study and know. But the true dominant also doesn't just better themselves in BDSM. They're always trying to grow and evolve as an individual, try to make themselves better to have them be worthy of their submissive service. True doms understand that their submissives are still people. And while owned by their dominant, be they having collars, tattoos, RFID chips, or a slave, pet, or little registration, they're still not exactly property, despite the term own. I myself have never enjoyed calling my slave wife property, and I find an actual problem with it when other dominants call them property. Now this, again, isn't necessarily a form of abuse, it's a dynamic thing for what everybody is called. But like I always say, every person and every dynamic is unique. There's no one size fits all in BDSM. Abuse in one dynamic can just be a fun kinky night in another dynamic. The only way to tell the difference is by clear, open, honest communication with your partner, be they the submissive or the dominant. There are lots more ways to be a fake and a good and a true dom than I could ever put into one lecture. These are small guidelines that I'm putting right now. And I hope that with my views in this lecture that other people will help understand the difference between abuse and BDSM. Now, for fake dominance, I have 14 of these lectures already done into videos. I share these on different pages. One person who clearly does not understand that the BDSM culture and community is supposed to be a give and take where we respect and support each other. We have enough flack coming from outside of the lifestyle without other dominants trying to tear people down. I put up lecture one, BDSM versus abuse, and a list of the other lectures that I had done at that point. And I said, if you enjoy the first lecture, please feel free to watch the other one. Well, a person puts a comment underneath. Well, I'm Master Justin, master of master things. So there. Now, I'm not normally one to question or criticize people's trainings or their claims, unless it's glaringly obvious that it needs to be. So I couldn't help but ask him, what training do you have to be a dominant? I've been in the lifestyle for 24 years. Nobody I train would ever act so disrespectful to somebody else in the lifestyle. And then I suggested that he read my book that I wrote, The DS Code. It's the etiquette for social interaction within the lifestyle between pairs, in clubs, or in a house. Now, as I said, there's lots of ways to be a fake, a good, and a true dom. And all it comes down to is, again, consent between the dominant and the submissive. Whatever the dominant and submissive both come to agreement on, that that is what they want for their dynamic, then that can be a true dynamic. And as long as the dominant is studying, learning to do better, then they can actually have a claim on being a true dom. 
a master has a bit more training. They might help or teach other people. They might even counsel others in the lifestyle. Just because you don't do these things doesn't mean you don't have a claim on the title of master or mistress. It just means that you have to consider what it could mean to claim that title. I'm Master Zahn. This has been lecture number 14, Being a True Dom Beyond the Basics. And thank you for tuning in. Please join me for the next lecture, which will be Colors, Their Meaning and Symbolism.